well, well. You may disagree, but up to me, it's a fact. You can't run in backs, it ain't no fun in that. Yeah, the sermon about to start, so I hope you know your stats. And if Kev get it wrong, then Rashad gon' have his back with, with the facts. Matter of fact, all we do is say win. Wins when wins, congregation say amen. Trades, debates, wins, losses, the latest news, but Prophet Kev speak, he got him saying hallelujah. I right, welcome to Preach Care, Preach Rashad here another episode, another sermon coming at you from Wildcard Sports here on Wildcard TV. Rashad, what's going on? We back at it, man. It's election season. We uh, still seeing some votes come in for that, but we just uh, wrapped that up. Hopefully everybody cashed their vote, make your voice count, all that. Uh, well, college basketball just tipped off. We uh, middle of football season. The college football playoff rankings are going up and down as we speak. We, we, Damn, Tennessee. <laughs> we had um, Tennessee at the top. Tennessee just went down. I think Alabama's done now with the loss of LSU. So Clemson, oh, we, we're just watching everything kind of unfold. Yeah, yeah Clemson football. went down too. Clemson Ooh, went down too. It was, it was a lot of a lot of upsets, man. But, hey, we, we back here again, man. Uh, Man, we had we – had, uh, Never mind. We'll talk about it. I'll bring it up later. All right. Let's 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 go again to the show, man. We got we're gonna talk about uh you know, we're gonna keep the spirit of the election season alive later on. So first off, man, let's talk about the LA Lakers. And I wanna I'm just I'm just gonna pose this and I and I know we talked about it off air before, but the Lakers are in a um very hard state because this when you have LeBron James, you have to win. That just what he's been doing for the past twenty years. Um, I think I think we had this conversation man, after they won the bubble. We was like, the Lakers really sorry. Once once a cute few pieces go away, they they're not gonna be able to recover, right? And they had this decision to go get Russ. They chose Russ over Demar. Um, a couple other decisions. Um, letting Kuzma, uh, you know, trading Kuzma away. KCP letting Caruso walk. Blah blah. When you get LeBron James, you got to try to win. And uh, because they have LeBron James, I don't think they can ever – They can, it, it, it would be a long time before they would be winners again, meaning they need, they need to start over. Trade Davis, trade Russ, start over. But it's hard to do that when you have LeBron James on your team and you're going to get rid of all the the best two players I got because um, <laughs> people saying, Russ, come off the bench. And Rashad, I, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still saying, for who? Because the guys they start starting ain't really starters either. So, uh, Lakers, man, your thoughts on it, man? I, I just, I just know it's hard for LeBron to, to win, and I don't even think he even care. I, I don't, I don't honestly think deep down he know we're not good. Yeah, I mean, as of this moment, the Lakers are last, well, almost last in the standings for the West. They are two and eight, and the Rockets are two and nine. So that that kind of tells you. Where they at. And normally when coming into the season, most of us still thought LeBron was a top 10 player. Davis is a top 15, 20, top 20 player, something along those lines. And, you know, you were hoping that Russ could kind of find his groove and fit in somewhere. But the team is just uh, – it's poorly constructed. Um, LeBron signing that extension really took away his leverage. But we, I mean, we've never seen him – <laughs> give away his leverage like that. Right. He normally keeps the front office um, on their toes. With Cleveland, he I'm going to play it out. And, of course, we know he did, he did the decision, went to Miami, same thing, let the contract expire, goes back to Cleveland, won two-year deals, lets that play its course, then goes to L.A., which at that time was the longest deal he had signed. Um, of course, that was – under Magic's leadership. So, you know, he had to trust in Magic. He went to get on the West Coast, particularly L.A., build his brand up and things like that. And he's done that. He's reached billionaire status. Uh, they did win the bubble championship. But now, with this recent extension, I don't know, outside of just wanting to keep his kids and family stable, because we know Bronny is – Bronny and Bryce are both, um, you know, playing – good basketball themselves at the high school level. And I guess LeBron wants to keep them in the same environment. And, you know, 
I, I think it was more of a family decision, more so than him being concerned about his basketball items. Um, L.A. has only been a, a market that can draw people over, but I don't know what's going on. I mean, if we really want to put the blame on somebody, I, I don't think it's LeBron's fault. I don't think it's Russ's fault. I don't think it's Davis and his health. I don't think it was Frank Vogel. It all, to me, boils down to Rob Polinka. He hasn't made adequate decisions <laughs> since um, – he got there. Um, and we can still say a little bit goes to, to Magic as well because some of these things from when LeBron first got there, some of that stuff was a uh, part of Magic. But the Magic and Rob just haven't really done um, LeBron any favors with this roster. Yeah, I, I, like, I think they really I, – I when they first got Russ, I thought it was a good idea from a standpoint of you got somebody who can run an offense when LeBron's down the court. And that's that's kind of like where I was at, and I'm like, well, probably should have went to Rosen, one who wants to be there, two, who can shoot from the mid range assassin, and and still at a at, at a peak of his powers. Like we know, Russ is on the way down, regardless of you know whatever you want to say, he's on the way down the mountain. Um, being in the league so long, um, especially with so many miles on his body, um, but I, I the trading for Russ. I don't think it was the end all be all. To me, it was the you let you because when they won the championship, they was the best defensive team in the league. Like, and I'm and I'm good with that. Like, you brought and yeah, LeBron was one or two, depending on how you rank it for MVP. Yeah, Davis yeah. was up there for defensive player of the year. Caruso at the perimeter. You had Kuzma who who was locked in defensively. Um, Danny Green, Danny Green, KCP, who three and D guys who know they value, know they roll, and when you let all four of them go, and who who was uh, who was big bodies like the White and Javale, like I I mean they 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 get they know they roll, Rondo know they roll and play great defense and do what they need to do get the ball to the king right, and I think I I think that's really where they messed up at. You got rid of all your shooting, you let Caruso walk. Now I'll say this. The best thing to happen for that young that young core of the Lakers was to leave the Lakers. Randall, Ingram, Hart, Ball, and now Kuzma. Like uh Kuzma is, is balling out in Washington. Like that was a, like he he's going crazy. And and, and he could I know he like he probably like LA, but he definitely wouldn't have been doing what he's doing now because because LeBron and Davis was in the way. And you know, a lot of things, you know, Davis didn't want to play the five. Okay, well now Kuzma is Kuzma got to go because we're gonna we're gonna play Kuzma, LeBron, and Davis at the somebody somebody got to play the two. Like, that's just crazy. So you know, <laughs> yeah, losing but losing all that defense is where they really lost it because if you're not gonna be a good shooting team, you know, aside from Danny Green, KCP, at least be the number one defensive team. And and my boys from Kentucky, man, they're not looking good. Him and his brother Cat, they uh, they they lost their way. Uh. And Davis, Davis, Davis is not like, even, like if we try to trade Davis real quick, like if you Miami, would you trade Bam? Because I wouldn't. No. Like and 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 that see that's the thing is like, all right. So I'm just trying, I'm trying to think of team a team that would a team that is good that that will want them. They're not going to give up hella assets for somebody who a part timer because of health and 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 thirty about to be thirty now, like. That, that that value that he got for bi and and uh and ball like that that was a lot and now Pelicans Pelican got their pick like they about to they about to get they might they might get victim <laughs> they might get victim. I mean like the Lakers are in a weird spot because they basically have non tradable pieces and normally you don't when you, when you have max contract guys they can at least be moved for a similar quality guy, you know, yeah, you take the Giannis's off the table, you take Luca off the t- table. I-, I think those guys don't get traded. You take Curry off the table, something like that. But for the right price, you know, you generally can trade other max type players. Um, for the most part, you know, like it, it don't always happen. We saw the Kevin Durant thing play out. You just can't get enough that, that for certain enough. players, yeah. you know, but, a guy in like that realm that Davis has fallen into, I don't really know what his true value is at this point. And plus, considering his 
association with LeBron, with Rich Paul, you know, clutching all those guys. He would have some leverage in where he even wants to go. So you kind of gonna you can basically cut off half of the league already from you know Pelicans drafted him, and he you could say forced his way to LA. I mean he's gonna go there anyway, whether he signed there or got traded there. So I think at this point, if he was to be moved, he's gonna still be a market guy so you got to think all right could the Nets get him could the Knicks get him could he go back to Chicago where he grew up you know it's only a, a oh, few geez. teams that would even be able to to get him anyway because I don't think Miami would do it nope. a market team I don't think a Dallas definitely not a Houston would do it and I don't think Golden State would do it. So I think your options get limited pretty fast on a, a good contending team plus a market for him. I am about to say Golden State, maybe just because the whole Draymond love affair. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Draymond and sent some shooters to the L.A. I, but but you're right. I mean. No, Golden State would. I don't even think they would entertain it. I don't think they destroy their culture. Well, I think he's already done for 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 Davis. I think because I think I mean, you, we know, we know Charles Barkley calls the street clothes. I don't think you destroy your culture for a guy who may only play fifty five games. That's true. That's true. But I, I'll say this: the reason, only reason why I think the Warriors are in a, in a different spot is because this is another team that you know you know when you you know you try to run when you try to bring the band back together, running back. Like for the most part, that shit don't be working. It don't work most for the most part, and I. I think I, I think the Warriors. I mean, you call me crazy, but unless Steph Curry do what he did the other night against the Kings, when he scored almost fifty points, I, I, I don't I don't know how far Warriors gonna go this year. And I, I'm and I'm being like dead serious. Like they can't play defense, and you, you're so relying on on Curry. But that's another another story. But but you're right. You don't know the value because you talk about like even, just talk, just saying this just, just saying that who would you rather have who would you rather have right now in the game. Bam or Davis, right? You probably choose Davis. But if you're a Heat, would you trade for Davis? No. Um, no. Like, if the cat, the Cavs right now thinking they might have a chance to win it all, let's just say because they got Mitchell, would you go trade for Evan Mobley? Cavs? No. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Not gonna, no. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> like, and, and, that, and, and, that's, and that's, I mean, that's pretty much where it is. Like, those are, those are two guys the Lakers could get back and, and bring back. I, I know you, you mentioned a trade about – you know, an ideal fantasy trade where we sit, we trading stars around, and I I seen, you know, people trade Davis and Russ in a package to Brooklyn for Ben Simmons and Kyrie and stuff like that, and you know, ridiculous. It's like it's like it's like a, these trades are crazy because I just don't I just don't see I just don't see Davis being that value no more. Like three years ago, we probably would say he 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 should get King's ransom and now it's like uh, I mean which he which he did because three years ago he was getting traded to the Lakers. <laughs> right. So but and but now we like uh Bam, you you have to give me some you got to give me a little more net than Andy Davis. <laughs> and that's the bad thing about it cuz I mean I, I I think I think uh I think he still can help a team but realistically I, I would say I would say hit the timeline for him doesn't doesn't suit up because Realistically, you know a team that he would he would actually make better and needs him. Probably a team like the Hornets. You got Lamelo and AD. That's something you can rock with. But realistically, do he want to go to a team that can't even make the playoffs? No, because he he don't. I don't think he I mean, won. They don't, they don't have any assets to really give up to get him either. I mean, that's what, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't think the trade value is high anymore. I, I just don't. I don't think. I don't think you. I don't think you can. Be like, I, I don't think you you scared of Anthony Davis anymore. Like, no, I, I think everybody has to change their expectations of him. Right. You know, when like when the GMs were doing all these anonymous surveys and stuff like that, where it's who who's going to be a future MVP of the league, and it would be Cat one year or Davis one year, or just whoever was the the highly touted prospect that was only in the league for two or three years, it was always somebody like that. And I just think. The Kentucky Anthony Davis to the bubble Anthony Davis, that's the greatest we're going to see of him ever since the, the bubble. And honestly, the bubble might have saved him because who knows if he would have maintained his health the rest of that season. So, I mean, you get a little nice little two-month layoff and stuff like that, keep your body fresh, you go to the bubble where 
some guys want to be there, some guys don't. And you guys, I mean, it, it was what it was. I mean, it was still some games played. And, you know, the team that won one, that was the Lakers. So, but ever since then, that the next season started off pretty fast and he's been banged up and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's just one of those cases where we have to change our view of him. I mean, he can still get you 22 points, 24. He'll still get you eight to 12 boards any given night. Um, he's still solid around the rim, but I just think we have to change our expectation of him. And that's not to say he's not still a elite top 20, top 30 player. It's just it's going to be some nights that that ceiling is going to be greater than others. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, dude, would you rather have the – how we talk about the the rise of Bam and Evan Mobley or would you rather have the, the guy that's probably going to be the – probably maybe be more consistent – but not play as much or something like that. And we talk about somebody you can lock into an all-star bid. And, and now he like, like you, you right. The expectations have to be different. The expectations are more on line of like how, how, how people get mad at Julius Randle. I feel like that's probably like, give me Siakam any day of the week over Anthony David right now. Like, but I feel like he's probably in the eight in that Randle range where if, like we're, if we're, if we're sitting here picking big men. And we're, you thinking of, of, of everything, everything together, like health and impact and all that kind of stuff. How you know how how we talk? How far would you go down the line? Because just like just like him, just like Kawhi, it's like we would. I mean, I I wouldn't take him just because I have to plan around him and and a plan around him without them being there. And that's the and that's the case. Like with him him not being there, the rough situation. The Lakers not being able to shoot. LeBron James twenty years in the league. Let's be realistic, and and, and that's why I like I'm. You know, people keep saying like LeBron this, LeBron that. Honestly, man, how 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 long do we have to keep, you know, begging LeBron to bring a team out of ashes? He been doing that <laughs> for nineteen other years, and now now that now that the team is not good and he's old, you expect him he used to go thirty points last year. You expect him to keep. Keep doing it. I, I just, you know, the expectations. I, I told everybody this. I, I was like, I said, they, I think they're probably on, on more of the line of the Blazers and the Kings. The Blazers have proven with Dame healthy that they're back to where they need to be. Um, but I was like, they're mostly on the Kings level. They're on the Rockets level. That's that's where, where they're really at. And and they had a hard schedule so far. I mean, you played a lot of good teams. Um, but the Jazz spanked them twice. And yeah, the Jazz is are way better than what we thought they were going to be. But at the same time, it's like, like you're not even you know you're not close you're not close to these like to these subpar teams, let alone the the, the big juggernauts. So you haven't even played a, a, a Milwaukee team yet. Like, what the hell are they going to do to y'all? Or what the hell are the Suns going to do to y'all? Or something like that. So it's hard. It's hard when you have LeBron James, man, because the Lakers are stuck. They had nothing. They can't do nothing. But this is this will be my only solution, Rashad. To, to save LeBron is to trade him to the Clippers and get back Powell. I know that I don't think they got picks either. They ain't got the picks either, so you can't you can't just get Powell and Covington and I don't know. You got to trade everybody. Everybody got to go. I mean, I I really hate talking about bad teams. I mean, like we don't really talk about the Hornets or the Thunder or yeah. And this is the last football. time we, talk we, don't, about we don't we don't talk we don't talk about the Texans. Like, I I hate talking hey, about bad a, teams. That's, you know? a, that's some real shit though. <laughs> Hey, I hate talking about bad teams, but it's just the state of you know it's the Lakers. It's, it's a market, and they they had LeBron James. And at this point, asking LeBron to save a team to carry a team is ridiculous. I mean, the dude's about to turn thirty eight in December. He's been carrying teams since he came into the league. Before he came into the league, the Cavs won seventeen games. His first year, they doubled it. They won 35. So he's been <laughs> – the dude has been carrying teams since he came into the league. I mean, the dude won multiple state championships in high school, been carrying franchises since he's been in the league. At this point, you know, and that's the thing. Like, he'll never get – he'll never get fairly rated, fairly criticized. He'll always be unfairly criticized, you know, and – it is a tough spot to be in for LeBron, you know. But most guys who are stars, 
if we are seeing the twilight of LeBron, most stars don't really go out on a high note. Nope. Um, nope. I mean, you you can you you can run through all the names. You know, Jordan can Jordan was the only one that could have went out storybook, but he came back with the Wizards. Lackluster because it wasn't the same Jordan from the Bulls that everybody knew and loved, and just how it ended on a game winning shot. I mean, most iconic photo in sports. <laughs> you couldn't write it better, but to still come back at 40, average 20, play 82 games, but he didn't make the playoffs. Um, Kobe spent some bad – some his last year on some bad teams. He finished with 60 in the last game, but it was still a, a uh, bad team, uh, no playoffs. Ter- terrible team. <laughs> yeah, terrible team. Uh, we saw how Shaq ended with the Cavs and Boston mm-hmm. and things like that. AI got booted from the league. I mean, T-Mac – uh, Kareem went out pretty decently. Uh, we know Magic had to retire uh, because of health the reason. He still came back and played a few games. You know, like just most of the stars don't really go out on. I mean, Patrick Ewing and Hakeem, they were on like the uh, Magic and Raptors and like these Tony Parker weird teams, man. Like Tony Parker uh, went to go play on the Hornets. Like when you look at like the legends of the the game, most of these guys don't really go out on the, the greatest of notes, you know, and that's, that's sports, man. It's a young man's game. Like you were throwing out an idea of what somebody want to get fam or mobile. It's a, it's a young man's game. You're going to always take the youth. Um, I mean, it, it is, it's just a, a reality of the sports. You got to always take the youth and where the Lakers are right now. They're stuck with Russ. Yes. The last year on his contract, but they're stuck with the guy who is ball dominant who plays with debatably the best player of all time, who is at his best when he's dominating the ball, getting shooters involved, which they have no shooters. And then now you have Anthony Davis, who is appears to be declining injuries and things like that. I mean, the Lakers are one of four teams that haven't won a road game yet. The Celtics, not the Celtics, the uh, the Pistons haven't, the Magic haven't, the Warriors haven't, and the Lakers haven't. So that kind of tells you what ballpark they're playing in. And it's surprising the Warriors haven't, you know. <laughs> it's hey, surprising they haven't. I'm telling you, man. The war- hey, I said it, and I got tweets on the – that was the last – what, what was it? The last, the last ride in the Bay last year. They, they, they had that Magic, and the punch from Draymond ended it all. So – Anyway, um, I only think with punch from Draymond, it's just it, it was over. It was over. It was it, over. It's 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 an era. Like Randy Crow, of course. That, that was the end to me. That was the end of the Steph Lebron, and we're entering a. We don't know who who the kings are going to be yet, but we're entering a new era of some some uncrowned kings are about okay. to happen over the next eight go, years. We we know Giannis, Luca, Tatum, and Ja probably the that's the four. That's probably the four right because it, it happens every time. It was it was it was Isaiah. Larry and Magic in the 80s. Jordan was there, but he didn't win until the 90s. It was Jordan and Hakeem in the 90s. It was Shaq, Kobe, and Duncan in the 2000s. In the 2010s, it's LeBron, Curry. You got to still put Durant in there. I'm going to throw Kawhi in there. And um, I'm going to throw my, I'm gonna throw James Harden in there. What he did scoring-wise and things like that, you got to still put him in. Like That was the, the 2010s. We're in the 2020s now. Yeah, the, the Warriors won a championship, but the 2020 is going to be a new crop of guys. Yeah, <laughs> that's just yeah. what it is. And that's it. And I thought, I know this is another topic for another day, but I really thought the Warriors were going in the right direction. But you know, I, I've been saying this since day one. They drafted the Wiseman, and that was a rock. When, when, is ever, when is drafting the big man over the guard work? I, it, 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 has, nah. it hasn't worked. And they should have had yeah, Lamelo. They, 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 they should have just uh, took Lamelo, and you cannot. In today's game, you just need to trade for a big. Yeah, he's not, and Wiseman's not living up to nothing. Like, I mean, aside from injury, he's not. Anyway, um, so that's our last time to talk about sorry teams. So we're done with the Lakers. Barring a major trade. Barring major trade, barring a magic turnaround, we're done. That's it for the Lakers. Hey, man. shout out to the Utah Jazz who everybody around. <laughs> The globe, I think, that watches any part of basketball thought they would be the worst team taken for Victor. The Jazz are nine and three Laurie Martin sitting atop the Western Conference. Laurie Marketing boy. <laughs> that boy star. Shout out to the Utah. Shout out to the Utah Jazz, man. Hey, shout out Danny H. Shout out Danny. Hey, hey Danny H. No what 
Hey, Windhorse, he's up to something. He's up to something. Uh, shout out Windhorse, man. All right, let's you change. You trade your two best players? Come on. Shout two out best players and you better? Huh? You got to steal, you you steal him, Lori. Shout him out, man. Oh, okay. And you traded, but you traded, you traded the best three. But Donovich, out of here. That's crazy, boy. That boy, that boy's working. Anyway, and he got hella picks. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jazz coming. Uh, Jazz here to stay. Uh, let's go to the NFL, man, where we're going to talk about uh, keeping keep with our election, the election polls, man. We had Maryland get their first uh, first black uh, governor. Uh, I think we saw some, you know, openly, uh, I think first open gay uh, governor get elected as well. And some other, some other, some other new stuff that, that never happens before, before in this society. So we go keep it yeah, saying. You, uh, you got a few places legalized marijuana. Um, I know I saw on Twitter a lot of people were shocked that slavery language was even on the barrier on the on the bell. Excuse me, slavery language was on the barrier. <laughs> I say it again: <laughs> slavery language was on the ballot in five states. Like people were baffled by that. I mean, but mm-hmm. it was out there. Um, so it, it was a lot of things on the on the ballot this year, and that's. Crazy. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're going to stay on that side. We got a couple of awards, a uh, couple of elections that vote me and Rochelle got, got a vote on right now uh, as we have, you know, down the stretch of, the, of this uh, NFL season where, you know, we was, you know, we talked about it last week, man. Seattle good, Raiders not. So we're going to we just talk about some little stuff like that. So we'll, we'll start off with the MVP, man. Um, I gave, I gave my nominees. You gave, you gave yours. We, pretty much, we got three. Three the same, so I'm gonna go and name those: Mahomes, Josh Allen, uh, Jalen Hurts. Uh, some other names, uh, names I mentioned was uh, Michael Parsons and Geno Smith, and you named uh, two. So um, because because they wasn't common, um, Geno, Tua, Parsons. Real quick, just talk about them. I just put Parsons on there because I just thought you know you know I know it was a QB award, but uh, for the Cowboys to win with the backup QB, Michael Parsons dominated. Pretty much every single week, uh, change the game, change the game, and how it was played on defense side of the ball. And I threw Geno Smith in there because I had no faith in Seattle. They won what six, seven games last year with with Russ, and without Russ, with their best players, their best players are two rookies and Geno Smith. Aside, aside from the the two stars of, of Ty Lockett and DK, like that's their best players. Kenny Walker emerged and and and, and Woolen on, as, as a corner. Lose Bobby Wagner. Now he on the sorry ass Rams. Like <laughs> <laughs> Damn, so, Bobby. So, you know, so I, I threw Gino in there and uh and you threw two on there. I mean Miami Miami doing them they, they damn thing. He got Tyreek Hill who possibly could be the best receiver, had the best single season receiver uh line, you know, all time, whatever. So, you know, um, but don't need to waste time on them too much. But Mahomes, Allen, Hurts, uh, make your case for 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 one of those guys, uh, I gotta go. I, I'll go with Mahomes. Um, they lost Tyreek, which everybody thought was gonna be a huge, huge deal. Um, I think that was the reason why, myself included, we all thought the ALC West was gonna be wide open. Um, the Raiders, of course, when they got Adams, the Chargers made their move. Denver went and got Russ. And it felt like the Chiefs just kind of became the afterthought of the offseason because they lost Tyreek. And, I mean, you look at how they replaced him. Mark, Mark West, Valdez, Scantling, Juju, and drafting Sky Moore. They didn't just go out and get another big name. So it made everybody kind of start to question, will the Chiefs fall back or will they be overtaken? And they have not. As long as 15 <laughs> – and you got Andy over there, man. These guys have uh, been playing some great football. Mahomes is up there on all the all the stats up there, passing touchdowns, passing yards. Um, they have one of the best records in the league. So you you gotta, I think you gotta keep Mahomes up there. His, his value to what they do, commanding that offense. I think you have to have him up there. Yeah, um, I I I would have came on here if before if we did this last week. I would have came on here and and raised praises on Josh Allen before he had his dud uh, against the Jets on the road in upset. Um, but but yeah, it's like it's like this is like uh, with Josh Allen. It's like 
we know they had number one offense, but you also got number one defense, right? Or like one of one of the best defense in the league. I think the case that also hurts hurts <laughs> no pun intended is he has the weapons, he has the E line, he has the O line, he has the defense. So I think Josh Allen and and hurts are the reason why I would I would cast my vote for Pat Mahomes is because you mentioned it. Outside of Kelsey, Chris Jones, well, they lost Honey Badger over the offseason. The offensive line, you know, they had that whole problem with should we pay Orlando Brown, should we not play Orlando Brown? Um, they got rookie running backs out here, McKinnon out here, who, you know, you start in Minnesota, but lost his way a little bit. But he's he's doing his thing. What's the running back? Isaiah Um Pacheco. Yeah, so you got you got him, Juju playing good. Yeah, for, the, for the Chiefs, yeah, yeah. Pacheco, yeah. Juju, Juju, who in the offense, you really couldn't see what he was really was about because of the quarterback there, MVS, obviously came in Rodgers, but but he's still making an impact. It's it's a, I mean, for for what for you like you you mentioned, you just give him guys. Don't go get the big name. I don't need the big name. Does it help? Does the the Tyree Hill make that Titans game easier? Probably. But Mahomes still find a way, and I and I think that's I think that's the real the reason why <laughs> I've already deemed him as the second best quarterback of all time. So I'm <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm going to he and to, to do that he got to win more MVPs. He got to he got to win more rings. So with that being said, I, I'm with you. I'm gonna I'm gonna side with you on that one. I'm cast my vote for Mahomes. Now this may seem a little controversial. No, oh. my runner up. Would not be Josh Allen. Okay, my runner up would not be Jalen Hurts. I know people are throwing him out there okay. as the, you know, they're undefeated. He's putting up great stats, and everything too. And for anybody who's been following along, they're gonna be, they're gonna they're gonna really say I've turned over a new leaf. My runner up for MVP would be Tua. Okay, I would I would go Tua as the runner up. I mean. Every game he's finished, they're six and no. Yeah. Statistically, if you take out the Cincinnati game, he didn't finish it. He would be fifteen touchdowns to two ints, eighteen hundred yards, completing seventy percent of his passes. I mean, the touchdowns were ranked fifth because Mahomes is one, Allen two, Burrow three, Lamar's four. And it's a tie between him and Geno at both at fifteen. The completion percentage would be second uh, in a tower at Burrow because Geno's at 73, so Tua and Burrow both have 70. I would have Tua number two for MVP because nobody thought this was this is his make or break year, and he's turned it up. You know, I'll say this. It's very interesting that you say that because I have – I have without a doubt took Miami Miami to win Miami money line every game he played in except the Bills game that 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 they, that they um that he got hurt in yeah they, 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 they did win that and Tyree Hill went stupid Jalen Waddle went stupid against my Vikings lost you you might you might you might be you might be on to something man I, I, nah you right I mean Tua Tua is playing some good football but when you was men- mentioning those stats you said a name twice. Yeah, I'm, he might have to be up there too. We, we got Geno Smith got to be up there, like because yeah, like uh, I, <laughs> Gino something, bro. Oh my god! I mean, and the thing is, like he was he got written off so fast because they were asking Geno to come in and re and and start over the Jets franchise with nothing, right? And and like I said, he went, he played back up for the Giants. He played back up for and they you know I I I don't know I don't want to say it's racist. But they definitely didn't want Geno Smith in there to replace Eli Manning when uh, we knew Eli Manning should get benched. They they put on little Dave's web out there, <laughs> and they ain't do nothing. But Geno was behind. Who else was behind? He was behind Russell Wilson. So he 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 learned from some good some great quarterbacks. So you know, um, Geno Smith got his opportunity. And why Seattle should not be winning no damn six games right now? They shouldn't. Yeah, the roster's not there. Yeah, like. If, if the season ended today, I think Gino would have the the record for highest completion percentage in the season. I think he would break Drew Brees' record. Um, he's sitting at 2,200 yards, 15 touchdowns, four INTs. So his his season isn't too bad. 
almost a four to one. That's <laughs> you can't you can't <laughs> beat that. You can't and, and with with Tua and with Geno, they yes, do they have elite receivers? Yes. Okay, but and do they both had a running game? Yeah. Yeah. So so they got what you need, but they also taking advantage of it because who who's not taking advantage of good receivers in, in a running game? Like like there's some quarterbacks who can't who still can't do it. So um shout out to praise of them. Um I think I think I think uh you might right. I the the hurt I think the hurts thing is just the team is the team is good. The team, the team is loaded, man. Like the team is too stacked. Uh like the fact that the fact that he don't have to put up they don't, the fact that you, you got to score in the second half should uh <laughs> should tell you should tell you all you need to know about about that part. So um before we get into uh to any other wars though, uh we'll take a we'll take a break and then we'll be right back. All right, let's move into uh coach the coach of the year. Um similar similar uh celerities. Uh, oh, Lord have mercy. What am I trying to say? Uh same 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 picks. <laughs> uh we both we both we both had uh Sirianni on there, uh Dayball. Uh, both had Pete Carroll on there. Um, I had Arthur Smith, and you had Robert Salas. So quick, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that for me. Um, Arthur Smith, I just, I just thought the way they they were winning games um, were to his coaching ability to realize what he has and use his strengths as strengths, and and not try to do what he wants to do, which, which, which is be offensive minded coach and pass the ball with the weapons that they have, but. But decide to run the ball and play, um, you know, run control and stuff like that. So that's why I put Arthur Smith up there, not necessarily for the winner, but just just to just to be thought thought about. So uh, why did you put uh, Robert up there? I had to put Robert Sala on because there was some conversation. I think we even talked about it that sometimes some guys are just better coordinators than head coaches, and this year with what he's done with not so much ideal play from Zach Wilson. Even they Zach you missed a couple of games. They started with Flacco. Zach comes back. Um they just lost a guy who I thought was going to be the offensive rookie of the year, Breeze Hall. Um they have so many different receivers. Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, Braxton Berrios, Corey Davis, Denzel Mims, Tyler Conklin at tight end. You have so many pass catchers and they're not throwing the ball great. Sometimes not even at all, really. <laughs> and, <laughs> the locker room is still holding it together. Like, yeah, Elijah spoke out and things like that. But the locker room, you know, the locker room is still together. They're still winning. They're at six and three. Um, they are on track to break their twelve year playoff drought. I, I had to, I had to put him on there, man. Just what he's doing with the team. Whatever he's I mean, he's, I think he's a player's first coach. And whatever he's preaching in that locker room, whatever messaging he's giving to these guys, whatever his methods are, it's, it's working for them. Um, they may just – unless Zach turns up a little bit, they might just be a quarterback away from um, being a legit team. You know, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. It is the New York market, things like that. But hopefully – um. This is a seat they can they can build on. So I, I I'm pretty high on Robert Sala right now. After being pretty skeptical about about him. I'll say this. They are a quarterback away. <laughs> they are a quarterback away. You are <laughs> Zach, I'm I'm not I'm not sold. I'm not sold on Zach Wilson at all. Um but we you know we all talk about this, man. If 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 you can't if 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 you if you're offensive minded, you're defensive minded, if you're not gonna be good at on your side of the ball, that's when you know you're not you're not good. And Sala yeah, top yeah, top five defense. I mean, the top ten in rushing, top ten in yards uh, allowed per game, and a top eleven because they're, they're number eleven in passing, passing defense. So now, now, not to mention, they might have the best corner in football. Like yeah. Tra- Tra- Travon Diggs, Sauce Gardner. Um, what's my man's name in Seattle? Uh, uh, Woolen. Yeah. Yeah, you got some you got some good young corners out here, man. You know, just like we were talking about with the basketball a second ago, the errors change. It, it was a Ramsey Gilmore lead. And and nobody is saying neither one of them anymore. <laughs> it was a Ramsey <laughs> Gilmore lead, man. It 
it, it, it's, you you get your five to seven year run, man, and it, the league the league moves on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think with Quentin Williams, man, and it's crazy because we were talking about like a couple years ago, like yo, they was uh, CJ Mosley with the COVID thing. Quentin Williams the only pick. You traded Leonard Williams away. You did this. You did this. You did this. Trade Jamal Adams away, and you 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 met you messed around, and now your defense is back to where they supposed to be at, and they keep you in games. So as long as your quarterback not giving the game away, you should be fine. So prime candidate. I know we all we talk about Jimmy G going to Tampa Bay, but if the 49ers really move on for Jimmy. Be familiar, San Francisco, same kind of system over there. And yeah, he can step in right there because they, I think they are a quarterback away. I don't think Zach Wilson, the guy. Um, I mean, we'll still give him time, but um, because why not? But hey, you you know how you know how it is, man. You got about two or three years. If you ain't if you ain't showing it, you ain't showing no signs. You got to go. Um, so we'll see if he shows any more like game winning plays because what what they had drafted Justin Fields, man, man, yeah. man. And like we had our doubts about Justin Fields, but just in recent weeks, he's turned it around too. It, see, it's like it's just if you gave him, I, I always tell people this: like he was, he was. I think he was, he was the best quarterback in that class to be given the bet the worst hand. Like and and try and he he's more capable of making uh, sugar out of shit than any other quarterbacks. Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, uh, Matt Jones, and who's the other guy I'm thinking? Uh, Trey Lance. Like he was the one that you can give a bad hand to, he can make something work. And if he got if he got the opportunity to get with the Jets, so he had the opportunity to play with the 49ers, a whole different ball game. But either way, uh, we'll see about Zach Wilson. But yeah, you're right about Salah. So coach of the year, uh, Sirianni, Dayball, Pete Carroll. Um, um, who who are you going with? This is a tough call. Eagles are eight and no. You can't go wrong with going there. I just told my case about Sala. I went with Pete Carroll. We didn't expect anything from Seattle. No. And we just talked about Geno a little bit before. They lost uh Rashad Penny to injury. Kenny Walker steps right in. I mean, this team came into the year. There are 22 starters. They only returned 11. So you had 50% turnover on starters. You basically had a uh, – we were anticipating a QB competition between Drew and Geno. Of course, Geno has it, and he's – Geno's playing at an MVP-esque level. For, for Pete to have this team on track to not only make the playoffs but to win the division – I had to go at Pete. No disrespect to Dayball and what he's done with the Giants, because I think a lot of us had written the Giants off. But I gotta go at Pete Carroll. I, I gotta go at Pete. Yeah, I, I mean, you make you make a good point. I mean, it, it, I, I I think you needed a QB to play at that level because that's what we was that's what we always thought Russell Wilson did. Like we always thought Russell Wilson was was saving Pete Carroll's job, like because he because he played so good. You don't know have the coach is good, but as you see now, it was a coach, right? Um, I'm going to choose. I'm 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 actually going to choose uh, Sirianni. Um, you know, uh, I know, yeah, 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 they ain't no, but um, it, it does have to do a little bit with scheduling because last year they couldn't stop the pass uh, to save their life. Um, anything that could pass the ball got them early. Hurts wasn't good enough to come back. The Eagles couldn't stop it. This year they got the corners. Hertz has shown the ability. He always he's always improved every, everywhere he's been. Like so, he's he's always that guy. He's a, uh, one of the best leaders at the QB position this year. Um, I just think I just think um, Sirianni know I, I, once he realized that if they just run the ball, the RPOs, everything else opens up because AJ Brown is always open <laughs> because because, <laughs> because Devontae Smith is probably always open and, and you, it, you, can, you can't double anybody cuz they have Goddard too. still got Goddard there so so I, I think I think once he realized if I just run the ball if we be a run first team everything else everything else is cake is cake because we you can't guard as one on one and on top of that when you think you got everything covered guess what my guy about to run for 20 yards 
So I, I think I think um I think I'm gonna go with Sirianni just because of that. Um the defense has played I, I didn't think the secondary would be as good. Like I know they got caught uh Chauncey Jordan Garner Johnson for nothing, but I think that was that was a key addition. Um so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with Sirianni because yeah, he got he he was given a great hand. He played it to the best of his ability. I mean, they they haven't they haven't looked bad against any team. I mean, they went to, they went at Arizona, so you already know they struggled there. Um, but we'll see, man. Cause I think this we talked about this schedule and, it's, and you know they got Tennessee Gi- Giants twice, Cowboys. So we'll see if they can finish the undefeated season. But if he goes down and win these games, you know he, you you got you got to give him the award. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. If they if they finish up, I mean, I think. I picked Pete, but ultimately I don't think he wins it regardless because of the Eagles record and then New York market, Dayball and Solomon will get love. Yeah. So yeah. No, 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 I mean no, but care but but I I, I agree with your your point though. We nobody believed at all in the Seattle Seahawks. And no. I, I said nobody believed the Jets. The was, only the person Jets. who I saw on any platform, even Seattle fans were like, it's gonna be a tough year. The only person who on any platform that said Seattle would be decent to competitive and would have a shot at anything, <laughs> Lewis Riddick. He's the only one. Why is he not a GM? Anyway, no point, no time. Um, next award, man, we got <laughs> we got this is a negative award. <laughs> um this this is this is like does uh like when you know when Georgia don't want to vote uh Stacey Abrams and we want to keep uh Brian Kemp in there. Anyway, um Dumpster fire, dumpster fire of the year, man. We got some bad teams. We got some bad teams uh, in in the, in the league right now. Um, and we had the same. We had, we 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 had the same nominees: the Raiders, the Colts, the Rams, uh, and then we can add the Packers as well. Um, so we can take we can take some time on, on this a little bit here because I don't know who I, I really don't know who gets this award. So let's let's just start with the Colts who. Just fire Frank Wright. We we haven't talked about that part yet. Fire Frank Wright. Um and I know you was on there and I was on there like you was like, that's unfair. Uh to, to what to what he was dealt with. Um and I say I say it's, it's crazy because are we are we still gonna continue to blame everybody else? Are we are we are we are we not gonna are we are we gonna keep blaming keep blaming quarterbacks and whatnot? Or are we are we gonna sit here and look at the GM? And you know, so some people some people say it's the owner fault, which Definitely. Uh, Ursa got a lot of say so in this thing too. Um first off, Jeff Saturday, man, to get a, to get the job without even being in the NFL or any college coaching experience, man. You, you, uh, I know you, I, I don't know if you've seen uh Marcus Spears or Cal Gr- Gr- going off on it, but said it. everybody said the same thing. They love Jeff, but everybody has a problem with the process. And that and that's the biggest thing, you know. Um, of course, the running rule is a joke, but just the fact that <laughs> Jeff, Jeff isn't a coordinator, associate head coach, assistant head coach. He's not a positional coach. Jeff was just on ESPN doing Get Up and these other shows, first take. And because you're in the coach ring of honor, friend of the, coach ring of honor, and you're a friend of the owner, you get a call and you get basically asked to be the head coach. Uh, the, the Colts in general have just been a snowball that's getting bigger, bigger, bigger. Like the Andrew Luck thing to now, I mean, they gave Wright seven different starting QBs in his tenure. It's not going to work. Your old, li- your old line's getting older. It, yeah. The, the Colts are not it. Now, Lewis Ritt did say this. He said, you have to build from the inside out. Which is for the most cases, I mean, that's how the eat why the Eagles so good, why Fort Nine be so good, dominating. Um, so yeah, so let's look at that part. Can Jeff Saturday save the offensive line? If if he does that, he he's one he saved Jonathan Taylor for you in Dynasty because that boy trash. <laughs> because the offensive yeah, line not good. Free, yeah. yeah, the old line. Well, he was good last year, but the old line has taken a step back this year. And he's had a little ankle injury too. That's kind of nicking him up. Yeah. So all right. So yeah. So I, I'm. I'm a. Uh, I'm. The coach. The coach defense is not bad. That team. That team. That team. That team is not. That that team is not bad. 
um, defense. But until they get weapons, until they get a the quarterback, until they face the whole line, that side of the ball is not going to be doing nothing. They got Jonathan Taylor so great, but they about they they gonna have to, what are they gonna do? Pay him? Like, <laughs> yeah, they're they're a team who I can see paying a running back. I I can see the Colts paying JT just because of what he does, and yeah, we know how that's gonna fall. You know how that's gonna go. Yeah, because of <laughs> because of his skill set, the division they're in. Um, I I can see the Colts paying paying JT. Mm-mm-mm. All right, let's go to another dumpster fire: the Raiders, who had multiple uh big leads <laughs> and lost all three of them. <laughs> I was big, was up big on the Chiefs. Was up big on the Jacksonville Jaguars this past weekend. It was big up on who I'm missing: Arizona. 20 to 0, lost the game. 17 0 to the Chiefs, lost the game. 17 0 to the Jags, lost the game. Got got shut out versus the Saints, who did nothing against the Ravens, Ravens last uh last week. So this team is not good. Um Josh McDaniels. Like, I think Josh McDaniels goes on the same thing with like we talked about last week with John Vaughn, who's, you know, now the Brooklyn head coach, next head coach. Shout out to him for getting the job, but sorry. Todd Bowles, sorry. They they was never had never been good and yet they got the jobs and Jonathan Daniels ain't proven nothing. I mean, at first, I would say this. The only thing he the only thing he has brought from the Patriots is the running part. Cause I didn't I thought Josh Jacobs was done. And Josh Jacobs is okay. Man. He's solid. So he's <laughs> back to being good again. So I'll say that, but man, the disappearing act from Waller, Devontae Adams is is either is either uh, Devontae Adams nine out overall, or he's Fresno State. Nobody know him about. That's why he went to Fresno instead of California. Devon, I, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's an up and down. It's too up and down for me. The defense sorry. They done cut what pretty much every they, player. They, they, they cut Jonathan Abram. Abram cut. So that, uh, man, man. Hey, hey. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do about the Raiders, man. I don't know what to say about him because. I would say I would say between that and the Colts, we have more faith in the Colts. So so does the Raiders qualify as a dumpster fire if we you know if we had them as the worst team in the AFC West? But it's like that would be my only, you know, debate why I probably wouldn't vote for them as the Dumpster Fire Award. Yeah, and we're basing this off of this season, man, but I, I just gotta bring this up. Like, we always – I've been in the camp of they should just move on from Derek Carr, let him go somewhere else. I mean, it's been nine years, and his success has been up and down with nothing because of coaching changes or um, roster not being adequate, things like that. But generally, when we see teams that are good, they play complementary football. This is what the Raiders have given Derek Carr on defense. 2014, this guy's a rookie. The defense ranked 32nd. In 2015, the defense ranked 22nd. 2016, they ranked 20th. 2017, they ranked 20th. 2018, they ranked 32nd. 2019, they ranked 24th. 2020, they ranked 30th. 2021, they ranked 26th. 2022, they ranked 27th. Damn. You can't get this man a top half of the league damn defense. Not once. You, you can't. You can't even get him in a top twenty defense. You're twentieth or below every year. <laughs> Derek calls a solid dude, solid quarterback, but it's not too many quarterbacks that can overcome defenses like this. Even Peyton Manning was having a hard time overcoming these kind of defenses. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Come on, man. And there, no disrespect. No, I'm not, not going to say it. No, no, no backhanded compliments. You got to give Derek Carr better than this. Nah, I, you got to nah, give any quarterback better. Any than this. quarterback Come better on. than that? Yeah, yeah. And he finally go give him his friend, and they even get by his other friend. Carr, 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 Carr not lawyer, man. <laughs> like, bro, think think about this too. Like some of their first round picks, Cleveland Farrell. You decline his fifth year option. Josh Jacobs, yeah, he's having a good season. You decline his his fifth year option. I guess he's balling out. He know I got to get a damn contract, and we know running backs don't normally get paid. <laughs> yeah, they just cut Jonathan Abram. Uh, I forget his first name, but they, they cut Arnett. I think it was Damon. Yeah, hey, Damon Arnett. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, we know what happened to Henry Ruggs. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And uh, Leatherwood's other first round. Oh, pick. oh God, they couldn't. Yeah, dang, I forgot about Leatherwood. Oh man. <laughs> so like, man. They, oh, this they, is they, they, the, yeah, we talking about this season specifically, but this, things like this are why the Raiders are on this list, and why they will, and why they've continued to be on this list and in these kind of conversations. Then they, then they, then they uh, <laughs> made a big splash for Trent Brown, trade him back to the Patriots, <laughs> spent all that money on just to give him back. Uh, it's yeah, you're right. It's a, it's a lot of it's, it's gate gave a lot of money to Renfro. Yeah, luckily it was like a little two-year deal. Um, and you would have thought with McDaniels coming over, they would have used him like they used Elderman and stuff like that, but they they haven't. He has the right offense. You got, I mean, I know I know uh Wall ain't no Gronk and Adam, but Adams can be the Moss and, and you got your Wes Walker. So I, I don't see why, but yeah, like I guess when Carr not Tom Brady, that's and your defense not Bill Belichick, I guess <laughs> I guess that makes a lot of a lot of reasons why you're not the Patriots. So um all right, so that's that's a look, we ain't even getting to the coaches. I mean, how many coaches had Derek Carr had? Josh McDaniels now, John Gruden, Jack Del Rio. Uh I forget the man who was the interim last year, but I thought I should have kept him the interim should've, coach from last year. Kept him, yeah. Um they've had Dennis Allen, they've had Tony Sperano, uh just I mean, just constant, constant turnover, man. You I mean just you you keep firing guys, hiring guys, it is um it, it's just not good. Rich uh, Bisacci, I want to make sure I give him his credit, man. They went to 75 with him. So that, that's what it was. I thought I should have kept him on board. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. But just all those guys, man, just, this is why the Raiders <laughs> are on this list. Yeah, all right. Let's go to the uh, another team we got on here. We got the Rams, the team who won the Super Bowl. Uh, in the words of the GM, F them picks. Yeah, F them picks. I was going <laughs> to say the same thing. This, this is all going. F them picks. F them picks, but <laughs> – but. <laughs> You wish you had him. Um, the A, A Rob experience fail. Um, had that that one season of of great running back from Todd Gurley, when he was just the best running back on the planet. If you haven't been able to run, run a ball yet since uh, all you guys Cooper Cup, you you don't let you don't you let, don't pay OBJ nothing. You let him go out there thinking you made a better move, and sh- what you got ain't doing nothing either. So you should have just paid him. Um, Ramsey, Man, we gonna overlook this. Traded Robert Woods, didn't sign Odell, and now you sign A Rob, and it is not looking good. You could have, you could have just, you could have just paid. You could just waited on Woods, <laughs> waited and waited on Woods to come back. <laughs> oh my gosh, um, can't run the ball, can't make us. We don't need you. All right, well we try to trade you. Oh man, we we you know what we declined the trades. Reports come out and say nobody wanted them, and then nobody talk about Aaron Donald no more. Nobody talk about Jalen Ramsey no more because everybody around those two guys are sorry. Uh, uh, what's the old dude name? What's the dude name that ain't get? He's got a lot of sex. Uh, Quinn, not Quinn. Um, what hell is his name? Pass rusher. Um, not. It was a Little Floyd. That's his name. Cause yeah. I knew it was a damn uh, former bear. Uh, Little Floyd. He ain't doing nothing no more. Uh, he lost Vaughn Miller. Uh. They brought on Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner, they ain't, we, we, I guess. You still got Jalen Williams on the outside. Aaron Donald. Like, you basically paid everybody. And to your point you mentioned earlier, it's hard to keep running stuff back. They gave everybody a raise and didn't get better. Didn't get better. Hey, that's 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 tough. That's tough because you say F them picks, but nobody's on the rise. I mean, Ramsey and Donald are probably the best you can get. Like, they are the best they could be. Stafford, elbow. Once I saw that this year, I was like, ooh, huh? Hey, we smart. We ain't put no. We ain't put no bet on Rams. Nothing. <laughs> All right, we nope. been. Nothing. <laughs> Once I saw the L boss, and I'm good. I'm good on that. I'm good on that. Um, man, the Rams from worst to fir- from first to worst. And, and I mean, outside of the books, win a title. Most of the recent NFC representatives have fallen back to the pack the following season. You know, um, we saw it happen with the Falcons the year after. Uh, Eagles with Nick Foles and Wentz the year after. Uh, the Forty Nineers were decent the year after they um but they, they didn't but they had a fourth place schedule to get back up to first. <laughs> yeah, so you know it's it's just one of those things, man. You 
when you make it, well, C- Seattle, they end up going to back to back Super Bowls. But just in recent years, man, the NFC reps, they normally don't get back or they don't have a decent season afterwards yeah, for whatever I'm, reason. I'm not. The Rams, the Rams are done. All right. I asked you, I asked you one question. Do the Rams make the playoffs? No. All right. Keep it. Keep it. And the last one, the Packers, where self explanatory. This is my about? pick. This is the dumpster fire I'm picking right now. This is my pick. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I add them to the list. They are my pick. Bro, they've lost more games. They've lost six games this year. They lost six games combined the last two seasons. <laughs> you are on a five-game losing streak. Aaron Rodgers was the back-to-back MVP. Now, I don't know what to say about my guy. Uh, the only thing they beat was the he, he looks. I mean, he got his money. It's the same. He got his money, and now he looks frustrated on the field. Um, <laughs> they did play Devontae Adams. The defense got m- not bad, but it, it's not the elite defense we were anticipating. They they kind of regressed overnight. We thought they were going to still have a solid defense. Lost for so Sean thought, Gary. Yeah, we thought they're going to be this great run-heavy team. They're really not force-feeding it to Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. Um. Aaron Rodgers is at 14 touchdowns and seven INTs. This is the most INTs he's had since 2016. And and that was a season-long number. He's only halfway through the season, and he already got seven INTs. <laughs> like, normally, that's his season total. Oh, man. Yeah, this is my pick. I don't, I don't like what's going on. Like, if this – we're at the point where if the season continues like this, you may have to say – Look, Rodgers, we're just going to sit you and just play Jordan Love and just try to get a better draft pick. Like, that's where you're at in the season. Like, you're you're one or two losses away from just saying, let's just hang up the season. They're done. I mean, the Bears got a better record, don't they? Well, damn near the same. Yeah, I think it's the same. They're both three and six. Hey, I think, I think all Aaron Rodgers care about is beating Chicago. That's all he care about. He didn't care about nothing else. Cause yeah, that, hey, I'll tell you right now, from my bro, bike, they just lost the Lions. Normally, bro. the Lions are the bottom feeder of the division. That's that's bro. that was the 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 tilting point for me to pick the Packers. They they everybody knowing the beats up on the we, Lions. They just lost to the Lions. When we did when we did our season projection of who gonna win what, I know for a fact we go look at it. I know we said Vikings play the Jets in Minnesota. We didn't think about it. Dub that might be that might be a loss. It could possible. <laughs> hey, we said. Vikings, Green Bay. All right, we'll split. Green Bay get their ass whooped. <laughs> You're like, man, it, they, 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 they were certain games. We <laughs> yeah, it was certain games. We were just locking it in. Like, oh, this is a, definitely a, a lock right here. And <laughs> it, it's, it, it's not looking good right now for Green Bay, man. Oh, it's shoot. not looking good. Yeah, I was say, if, as long as Green Packers beat um, Bears, I think Broad to be all right with the season. But it's terrible. Um, you lost Zadarius Smith to, to your rival. He's going crazy. Winning player of the month, and yet, yet y'all can't do anything. You lost Rashawn Gary, you're probably best D lineman outside Kenny Clark. He's gone for the season. Jal Alexander began his began cooked by any any Viking receiver, whether it's uh just Jefferson Thielen or whether it's Stephon Diggs in Buffalo. Uh, it got blown out by them. Um, they're not good, man. Um, the fact that Rodgers was a minus ten favor uh, underdog, but like that, all you need to know. That's all. It's, the, the team, the team is terrible, and and, and you you vote for the Packers. I I tell you, I will tell you this. I'm gonna vote for the Rams because I will take it back. I'm voting Packers because the Packers were 13 and three, like three years in a row. Um, yeah. There's no way. There's no way you put the fall this far from Greece, bro. The, the fact that they could probably, I don't think it'll happen. Um, but it's very possible. The fact that this five game losing streak could get to eight. Green Bay under. under they, they they playing the Cowboys next. Loss. Um, they're gonna play Tennessee on a short no, they, they yeah, they're playing Tennessee on a short week. So they, they play the Cowboys on where, the thirteenth. Where to play Tennessee at? But well, they're both home games. Cowboys and Titans are both home games. So in, in Green Bay. But they're it's a short week. You're gonna play the Cowboys. On the thirteenth, you'll play the Titans on Thursday night, the seventeenth, and then you um 
basically get a, a second by uh, your, your first bye week. Basically, you're gonna go. You get ten days off. You play Philly. Loss. Um. So you you may you may lose two of your next three, or you could lose all three. I sure hope Tannehill come back because I don't want to see Aaron Rodgers <laughs> and Malik Willis. First, when neither one can pass the ball. I mean, neither <laughs> team can pass the ball. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, oh, man. we got to look and see what the. I'm curious to see what the line is on Green Bay. They're at three let's wins up. now. Let's pull up. Let's pull, let's pull um, up. I, I don't think they get they, – they may not get six or seven. You're going to play the Cowboys, Titans, Eagles. You're going to probably lose two of those three. You're going to go to Chicago. You get your bye week. You come back. You play the Rams, Dolphins, Vikings, Lions. I think – Six or seven wins might be it. Cause they they they're not beating the Cowboys, Vikings, or Eagles. I'm telling you that right now. I, I I can guarantee you that. That's three losses. So that's now you're three and eight. Yeah, man, you you taking you taking Green Bay down to Miami on Christmas Day. Miami easily. Oh, they gonna beat Miami. They not beat Miami. Oh hell no. They can't, can't score enough. And and, <laughs> and, and as as good as this pass defense is, they can't stop a receiver. They can't stop, not a good one. So they can't stop. They never won't stop. They won't stop Tyree Hill. Green Bay is currently yeah, said it. Curly, if, if, if we're giving them at Miami, at Philly as losses, um, and they'll probably lose to one of Cowboys or Titans. They lose Cow. They're not beating Cowboys. Impossible. Impossible. Minus unless Cowboys, is, unless Cowboys play on play like you know we we playing we playing the Packers. They saw already. We we just gonna walk in there. McCarthy not letting them lose to no damn Packers. All right. <laughs> like he needs some get back. Hey, you gotta get some get back. So look, all right. So look, they got they're three and what now? They're three and six right now. Three and six. Three and seven Cowboys. Three and eight Vikings. Three and nine Eagles. Three and ten Dolphins. Dolphins. Okay. So How that means mean the best you can do is seven and ten if we get them all those losses. Okay. Bears, Lions, Titans, and who the last one? Rams. Damn. I can't even count the Rams win. They, they, they play the Rams after the bye week, so they, would you, they get. Would you take the line of six and a half? That's where it's at. That's where it's at. So if they lose the, the four games that they should lose, they should lose because they're not talented enough. Like, bro, I'm just going to tell you right now. I'm taking the under. Plus 155. We got to take it right now. We got we to take, take it before they play. Like, you, you, to me, you gotta take the under because at some point they're gonna just pull Rodgers and just play Jordan Love. That's a good, and that's a good point. They probably gonna pull him. That's a good point. Plus six and a half. I mean, it's under six and a half plus one one fifty five right now. At some point, you gotta just say, "All right, this is we we've seen enough." That's and like I thought, they were turning around, bro. Like they they opened up with a loss to the Vikings. They won their next three. They were sitting at three and one. I'm thinking they're gonna be okay. Now you just bottomed out like you lost five in a row. Hey, bro. So I, I don't know, man. Hey, bro. It's over for them. I think with every man's schedule, six and eleven might might be where it's at. Because it, I'm assuming they pull Rodgers. Like I'm assuming this does not get better, and you don't want to. You gave him all this guaranteed money. Yeah, it sounds crazy to sit him, but I think you kind of you may be incentivized to just say, "Look, man, let's just let's just get ready for next year. Put Jordan Love in." Bro. I'm with you. Under six and a half. Between, we're choosing the Packers. And all we need is the Rams or the Titans. If they if they lose the next two, oh, I, I mean, it's in the bag. It's it, a lot. Yeah. It's, it's a lot then. So take that under six and a half before before this Cowboys game, uh, which which really shouldn't affect the even they lose the Cowboys game because it's supposed to lose it. they're supposed to lose that game. You got to do it. You got to do it before the Titans game for sure. Um, yeah. All right, moving to another one award, the letdown award. Most likely to let down. So we had the two. We we had the two common ones. Um, I put Giants on mine. You put Vikings on yours. Uh, I think we had the pretty much same mindset of that one, where there's two. It's two teams that's winning games, and you probably think they could be one and done in the playoffs. Is that is that what we think on, on those two teams? Okay. Yep. All right. So we we we, are, we know about that. All right. So let's move to the the other two teams that we had the same one. And I th- I think we had the same idea. Eagles. Bills. Because Eagle. because you're talking about if you can't win the Super Bowl, it's a letdown, right? Is that what, is that what we have on this one? Yeah, for where for where they are, with all the moves the Eagles made, it's Super Bowl or buzz. 
the way the Bills have went all in with Vaughn and mm-hmm. where their roster is, Diggs, Allen, all these guys, they are Super Bowl or bust too. Okay. Um, I'm taking the Eagles. I think the biggest concern is, I said it before, if they ever get behind, I don't know what they'll do. Because they they've primarily been just bludgeoning teams, running the ball with Sanders, Hurts mixing it up, RPOs, or you're once you get teams loosened up, you hit them over the top with AJ Brown. But if, if somebody, if Hurts isn't running the ball good, or if somebody ever gets ahead of them and they have to play from behind, I don't know how that'll turn out. Because we haven't saw it yet. And for the Bills side, is the. Uh... They don't score up in the second half. Like they had some games where they don't really do yeah. much in the second half. How about, so how about, how about that's, say, that's my- uh, Minnesota missed the Irv Smith um, wide open touchdown to be down seven. And then I think Cousins threw out two picks in the second half. So I know that one, the, the Cardinals, didn't the Cardinals kick a miss a field goal to, to, to win that game or tie it up or something? Um, yeah, they, they already had close calls. So, and, and the Bills, can they win the close games? They lose. They, they did. They did pull, pull and beat the Chiefs, but then they lost to the Jets. They lost to the Dolphins. So, you know, take, take that with a grain of salt. So if the game is close, can the bull, can can Josh Allen do enough and not mess up? Um, if the Eagles get behind, can Hurts not fall under pressure and win the game? So that's the two questions that you know really haven't been checked by either team. Um, so you choosing the Eagles? I'm going to choose the Bills just for the reason. Is their time, and if they don't do it now, when would they ever do it? So you know, at least at least the Eagles could be like, well, this is our first real, you know, first time in the playoffs. Really hurts, you know, we played last year, but blah blah blah. At least you, at least you could say something. But the, we've been praising the Bills for the last few years, and you know what's gonna happen next year? He might he might not get poached, but Frazier might get poached away. You might get poached away. Now you got to replace a coordinator. Oh, I mean, yeah, you got Dayball poached away. Po- Dayball is gone <laughs> now. Oh, Ken Dorsey has been lighting up. Let's poach him away. So it's coming. And I don't think the Eagles. Will, I don't think the Eagles are losing the uh, uh, defensive coordinator <laughs> or offensive coordinator anytime soon. So um, anyway, uh, so that's not bad. I, I, I th- but I, I knew once I saw who you go, who you chose, we had the same idea. That it was because it was Super Bowl or bust at this at this moment in time. Um. Last we got last three minutes left. Um, executive of the year. We got you got you, you, uh, I, I gave you two, you gave me three. Uh, so you added the Jets in there. I think you pretty much said it most of it when you had solid how the defense re- recovered. Uh, they got weapons, they got the running game. They they even drafted good on the offensive line. They just waiting on the quarterback that, that that they also drafted. If you just turn around and get, and get right, then then you know then you can win that. Uh, but we have Eagles. They both had Dolphins on here. Uh, we mentioned the Eagles already. How 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 great of a, great of a job they did filling all the holes up, um, cutting Fletcher Cox, bringing him back, drafting Jordan Davis, the best tackle in the draft. So you're already cheating there. You you bring over uh, Bradbury, you bring over Char- Charles Garner Johnson for nothing. You get two linebackers and the Kobe Dean fall in the draft, um, and then brought over Seam Reddick. Um, you bring over AJ Brown, the ch- the the best move probably one of the be- I say second best behind Tyreek Hill. Uh, because we got the Dolphins GM as as one too, when they bring over Tyreek, um, just got Bradley Chubb, uh, who else they got? Um, you know, hiring Mike McDaniel. Hiring Mike McDaniel. That's that's that's, that's yeah, that, that 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 go that goes with it. The the, the running back committee bringing over Mostert. He's going crazy. Just got Jeff Wilson. He went crazy. For, I'm glad. Yes, he went he went crazy. For, he went crazy. So they they got. I mean. They they got everything, man. Both teams, um, from a gen, from an executive uh, standpoint. So, which which team are you going with? Well, I picked the Eagles, man. They they have no holes. Like they, there there ain't no for a reason. That roster was perfectly constructed. Yeah, I, and I would say I, I'm I'm with you. I'm picking the Eagles too. The, you can't choose the Dolphins because I think if the Eagles get hurt at quarterback, I think uh, I think Minshew's straight. Minshew mania. I think he's straight. And Dolphins get hurt. Two got hurt. We already know Teddy Bridgewater ain't it. Skylar Thompson showed promise, but he's a rookie. So tough for a team that's ready to win a championship. It ain't gonna it ain't gonna right. So so those are our awards. Uh or or our cast votes there. 
Um, so hopefully y'all you know, y'all side with those. Y'all don't have anybody extra for MVP, coach, or dumps of fire or let down. No, team, no right ins. No right ins <laughs> on this ballot. God damn it. Uh, so uh, we'll be back next week. Um, y'all, y'all, y'all stay safe out here in these streets. I'm gonna be up and down the road, man. Going, I gotta go catch Luke. Gotta go catch Jaw uh, for my basketball. So uh, uh, y'all be safe. Uh, appreciate Rashad. Yeah.